Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today's video is a tabletop review and comparison of the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 9mm and the new Mossberg MC1 Subcompact or MC1 SC 9mm. We are going to start off with an unboxing and then move through a point by point comparison of both. So if you are considering between either one of these two options for your next concealed carry handgun, you will have a better idea of which one will fit your needs. Anyway, if that all sounds interesting to you, please stick around, that's coming up now. All right, let's jump into a quick unboxing, starting off with the Mossberg MC1 SC. So it comes in a cardboard box with the sort of packaging reminiscent to the Shockwave, where you just fold these tabs over and you can pull it out of this uh, plastic wrapper. They do say to be careful not to cut that because you can reuse it, but do what you want. There is a little chamber flag in there, which we will remove. Now this does come with two magazines, a seven round extended and a six round flush. These are the clear count magazines. They are sort of a, a, a translucent plastic body, so you can see how many rounds you have available in the magazine. It does come with the gun safety lock and your instruction and warranty information, and that is it. Now jumping into the M&P Shield, it also comes in a cardboard box. We'll go ahead and pull it out of this little plastic sleeve, check that we are clear, and we are by removing this chamber flag. It does come with a flush eight round magazine as well as, I'm sorry, an extended eight round and a flush seven round magazine. So you get the two mags there. Warranty and instruction information and gun safety lock. And that is it. Okay, starting off with these, I'm gonna start off with some general specs and an overview here. So let's start with the shield. It does have an overall length of 6.1 inches, a barrel length of 3.1 inches, a height with the flush magazine inserted at 4.4 inches. With the extended magazine, you are at 4.9 inches. Now, the MC1 subcompact does have a length of 6.25 inches, so a little bit longer than the shield. It does have a barrel length of 3.4 inches, so about 0.3 inches longer than the shield, and a height of 4.3 inches. Now, bringing these in for a weight comparison with the extended magazine unloaded, the Mossberg is at one pound, 3.2 ounces. And the shield at one pound, 4.7 ounces. So just a little bit shy of two ounces heavier on the shield. Now these do fit very well within the same realms of their size and weight. Their capacity is very similar with the shield being at a eight round extended mag and a seven round flush or over here on the MC1 at a seven round extended or a six round flush. Now the price point also makes them pretty close competitors here. The M&P Shield lately has been at about 200, 250 on the very low end up to about 300 is where you're finding these now. The MC1 SCs are going for about 350, but as these stay on the market a little bit longer, I mean, keep in mind the Shield's been on the market for like 10 years. This is a brand new release into the market, so give it a little bit of time. I mean, 10 years from now, this will probably be right in the 250 to $300 range as well, just speculating a little bit. So between size, weight, firepower, and price, they are very competitive options. So as we move through the review, we will see sort of what are some of the pros and cons of each option here. So let's go ahead and start off with the slides, starting with the Mossberg. So we do have a stainless steel machine slide. You do have this really nice angled textured slide serrations here in the back, as well as up in the front if you want to do any type of press checking. Here is an external extractor. Now up at the top, you do not have any type of chamber indicators here, but I guess you do have a little ridge there that you can feel if the chamber is loaded. So there you go. That's a tactile sort of way of checking, but there is no visual indicator. Now up at the top, you will see you do have your sights in a three dot configuration. They are dovetailed on both the front and the back and are fully windage adjustable, but they are not elevation adjustable. And the sights themselves are polymer in construction. Now moving over to this side, of course, you will see the same slide serrations on this side as well, your MC1 SC and Mossberg roll markings. Now, of course, this is a striker fired pistol and in the back, there's a little back plate here to very easily get to the striker assembly, which we will do for disassembly, which I will show you in a minute. Now the finish on this is marketed as a diamond-like carbon coating, but it really just is a DLC 
coating on here. So a very nice sort of a modern finish a lot of people are using on their uh, firearms these days. Now the shield slide is also machined from stainless steel and it does have an Armonite finish which is a melanite treatment essentially. You do have these fish scale slide serrations in the back but nothing up at the front. Now keep in mind the 2.0 has come out uh, about a year or two ago and you do have front serrations on that if that's something that you're interested in getting. Here's your extractor on this side. Now there is a loaded chamber indicator, a little porthole opening at the top. So when there is a round chamber, you will see the brass. Keep in mind, you will need some sort of light to help you with that. The sights here are also in a three dot configuration. There is a little, uh, little set screw here, but you can take that out and drift adjust for windage on both the front and the back. Now these sights are steel in construction. If we move to this side, you can see the slide serrations in the back as well, and your Smith & Wesson and m and roll markings here as well. Now the caliber designation can be found here as well as on the top of the barrel. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trigger pull weight of each of these options. I will start here with the shield. We are at three pounds, 9.1 ounces. And looking at the Mossberg, three pounds, five ounces. So taking a look at the trigger on the shield, of course it is polymer construction. You will notice this little joint point here. And as I pull at this tap and the back lifts up out of the way, that is a trigger safety. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pull. So you just have a little bit of take up right here and then you hit that wall. You'll see of course that trigger safety to press back into the frame. From there, go ahead and give it a squeeze. And right there is your brake. Go ahead and show a reset. From here, we can go ahead and just start letting off. Resets right there, of course, pull right into a brake again. Now, one of the complaints on these shield triggers is they are a little bit gritty, kind of like somebody poured a little bit of sand up in there and inside the trigger. Now on the 2.0, there was a little bit of an update to that to make it a little bit better. But if that really bothers you for about 80 or $90, you can get an Apex trigger, which I personally can attest to is an amazing trigger and a huge improvement here. But for concealed carry inside the waistband handgun, it's not terrible, but definitely by far or far from being the best option on the market. Now here is the trigger on the Mossberg. You will see it's also polymer in construction and it does have a flat face protruding down at about a 45 degree angle. Now there is a little trigger safety there at the, at the front of my finger. So of course, without that being depressed, it is safe, a little drop safety feature there for you. When you go to naturally depress the trigger, you do disengage that just like on a Glock or anything else. So let's go ahead and start. You do see a little bit of travel right here and then you hit the wall about right here. From there, you go into a nice pull. Very, very, very clean break. No grittiness or anything like that. And definitely no over travel as well. And when it breaks, you're right up against the back of the trigger guard. So from there, we'll go ahead and depress. And right there is the reset with a nice audible click right back into a break. This is a very, very smooth trigger. I like it quite a bit. Definitely a better trigger than on the shield. Definitely an improvement. I would probably say Better to me than on the Glock 43, sort of maybe like a Walther PPS, sort of what this reminds me of. But very nice trigger, I like that. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the field strip starting with the shield. So we'll go ahead and remove the magazine, check that we are clear and we are. From that position, we'll go ahead and open it up and lock it to the rear. There is your takedown lever on the side here. Go ahead and throw it down into the six o'clock position. Gently release the slide forward. Now, there is a way that you can depress the striker internally by using some sort of punch or anything like that. I just go the simple route and go ahead and pull the trigger. That will release the slide from the frame. Now, once you have that apart, you do have a captive, captive recoil spring or a double guide rod and spring setup. And there is your barrel there. And you are field stripped. Now let's go ahead and look at the disassembly of the Mossberg MC1SC. So this is a little bit different from anything I've seen before. Let's go ahead and remove the magazine, check that we're clear. Now from here, we will go ahead and lock the handgun open. Now in the back, this little back plate will come right off, allowing us access to our, our striker assembly. So you just push in and then down and that slides right off the back and you will see the little orange back end of the striker assembly. You can just grab it from underneath and extract it out the back of the slide. Now go ahead and set that aside. From here, gently release and let down gently on this slide and it'll come right off the frame. Just like on the shield, there is a double guide rod and spring recoil assembly and then your barrel pops right out. 
and that is a field strip. Now keep in mind, because you were able to do that, it's sort of heralded as this sort of safe disassembly uh, process. So you do not need to pull the trigger to release the striker. In fact, the striker is actually completely removed from the firearm before it can be fully disassembled. So one thing I don't like about this sort of setup is it adds two more parts, very small parts you need to keep track of. So if you have to disassemble this for any reason, keep in mind this is a concealed carry firearm. And I know in most cases, all of us do all of our cleaning on a static bench, you know, where everything can be kept track of. But if you have to, for any reason, tear down your handgun to resolve any type of issue, you're moving quickly or, or under stress, maybe you are in law enforcement and, and you're thinking about getting one of these as a backup, you now have two small parts that you can easily lose track of during a disassembly process. So I'm not saying that's a total negative, but that's just something to keep in mind and consider. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the frame. So the shield is a polymer in construction. Now all of your internal components like your guide rods, extractor, ejector, uh, trigger bar, and all of that are steel in construction. On the left-hand side of the firearm, your takedown lever, your slide stop, and here is your manual safety. Now, if you do not like to have a manual safety, you can get this option without it. Usually there's no cost difference, whether plus or minus. Uh, the trigger guard is nice and large, big enough to get uh, you know large size fingers, or especially if you have on, I would say a thinner profile glove. If you have thick winter gloves, it might not work so well, but definitely big enough to get a reasonably sized uh, glove in there. Now your magazine release is polymer in construction and is not reversible. So it is set up inherently for a right-handed shooter. Now, of course, left-handed shooters can use their index or their trigger finger or anything like that. Uh, to manipulate it from the left hand side of the firearm but again that's up to you grip texturing on this is mild there really isn't a whole lot of over ag aggressive texturing there's no finger grooves or anything like that and definitely with the use of a extended magazine there's plenty of real estate to get your entire hand on the firearm uh, i have pretty small to medium sized hands and i of course do not have issues i do have a lot of customers in my store that do have large hands where this is even a little bit too small but i would say that they are really the exception and not the rule uh, you do not have any type of interchangeable back straps or anything like that which you would get on the larger variants of the MP line but there is a nice amount of little palm swell here again i'm not somebody who likes aggressive texturing so i am right at home on this if you want more aggressive texturing you can get like a pierce tape or a talon uh, grip tape or the smith and wesson shield 2.0 comes out of the box with a more aggressive texturing on the grip and this just so happens to be my EDC, the first generation shield. So uh, I'm a fan of it. Obviously that goes without saying. Now the Mossberg frame is also polymer in construction. Now the magazine release is polymer as well and it is reversible. So if you are a left-handed shooter, you do have that option available to you. Now this does come with a thumb safety and again, it's a little bit different as it is a push type safety, kind of a crossbar safety, typically of what you would find maybe on a, uh, a modern production lever gun or anything like that. Um, I'm a little bit out on whether or not I like that one thing I will say is when I first pulled this out of the box and sort of started messing with it and kind of figuring it out, there was two separate times without thinking about it. I went to remove the magazine and I pushed on the safety instead. They are right above each other. And again, I've already had that mistake once. Now, the one interesting thing about the positioning is, and I know I'm upside down here, is it allows your thumb to move in one range of motion to get to your controls. As opposed to a safety towards the back, which you see in a lot of handguns, you sort of have to break your grip and reach back to flip it on and off. Here, it's just drop the slide, turn the safety off, drop your mag if you need to. It's all right here in one fluid range of motion. Now from the back of the handgun, you can see, if you see the red, red means dead, you are ready to fire. So that's a nice visual indicator for you there as well. Again, I am not too sure on whether I like this or not. It's something I would have to play with and carry to really get that idea firsthand. Slide stop is here, it is not ambidextrous. All of your internal components like on the shield are steel and construction where they need to be, so no complaints there. Trigger guard is very large, larger than on the shield, so no issue with getting on gloved hands or anything like that. So it could be a good winter carry option for those of you in colder states. Now the texturing on the grip, again, is not overly aggressive, but it is definitely um, a little tackier than on the shield. And you do have finger grooves here, which could be a good and bad thing. People with larger fingers, like on the Glock products, the Gen 3s and 4s, 
would complain of their fingers sort of resting weird. If you, if the placement of your fingers isn't right, this is not going to really fit at home to you. But if you have smaller to medium sized hands, you will probably feel good. Really nice palm swell here on the back. And of course you have very nice texturing on the back strap as well. Overall to me, a very comfortable grip, especially with the extended magazine. Again, my hand fits on there perfectly. And actually to me, a little bit of a more comfortable feel than on the shield. So definitely some nice positive upgrades here. Um, overall nice, I like it. Now another question a lot of people ask about new firearm release products is will it accept Glock mags? And the answer to that actually is yes. So this is a Glock 43 magazine. Fits right up in there and locks just fine. Again, gives you a nice extension here on the extended 43 magazine. So uh, that's a very nice feature there. Now keep in mind these standard magazines are six round capacity but just a nice little feature there. It's cool that they thought to include versatility on the magazines, which actually is something I'm happy they did because I'm not really sold either on these mags. Um, I used to play with airsoft guns when I was in high school and college, and this actually feels like a really cheap like Springer airsoft magazine. Uh, something that if you sit on it wrong or something like that, it just feels like it'll crack or damage. I personally, I mean, I know that the Glock 43 mags are plastic as well, but they do just feel in the hand more substantial. This honestly feels like something that would come with a toy gun. But again, I don't have the experience of carrying this, you know, over a long haul. So I can't say really firsthand how this would hold up. All I can say is, you know, other things like this, just it just feels cheap. All right, wrapping it up with some final takeaways here. Again, sort of the springboard for this analysis is the price point. Keep in mind, you can get the first generation shield right now between 250 and 300. And these are gonna be equalizing around the 350 mark. At least that's what I'm selling uh, them for in my store. So you're looking at about a 50 to $100 price difference. Are you getting enough features or added benefit in this new option, the MC1SC from Mossberg? My answer is, yeah, I mean, I definitely see the added advantage. There is a definite improvement to the trigger. I like the enlarged trigger guard. The finish or the coating on there is nice. The fact that the uh, the slide serrations, you get forward slide serrations as well. The texturing on the grip is nice. Not a fan of the magazines, but it is really cool that they allow the option to switch in with the Glock 43 mags, especially if you carry a Glock 43. So you do have usability there as well. Now, if I had the shield and I carry the shield personally, would I sell this off to then upgrade to this? Uh, personally, probably not. I, I might try and purchase one of these separately just to try it out and see how it you know feels on the range and everything, which is the other half of the story that of course this review is not telling. But um, I don't see I don't see the massive differences there, especially for the, you know the shield is something I'm comfortable with. It's something I've carried for a while. Um, if they were if this were in the 250 range or the, the 250 to 300, I would say. Yeah, definitely a, uh, I would be picking one up right away and definitely doing some comparisons and I still might, I don't know. Uh, there's a few things about this I'm not too sure about. The safety is a big one. I don't know if I like that or not. Uh, the magazines is another one, but you know, grip, everything about it. I mean, it feels more comfortable, the trigger's better. Um, the capacity is another thing. You can get away with, for the same size, you can get away with one more round in the shield. I know one more round isn't a, a, a huge night and day difference, but why not if you're at the same general size and weight anyway? And then keep in mind too, you know, if I'm looking at 250 from one of these online or maybe 300, I can get that apex trigger in there if, and get something even better than this uh, and then end up in about the same price point. But over time, I think even within the next year or two, I think that these are gonna drop down to probably around 300 as well. I'm just speculating on that. For 250 to 300, I think this would knock it out of the park. Again, I think the price is just a little bit higher now because it's a new release, which is to be expected. Um, how it fits in with other things definitely uh, beats the Glock 43 on price. The Walther PPS, actually the PPSs have come down lately too, but it, I will say it fits in line well with the others. It's not overly exciting and it, it hasn't really reinvented the wheel enough to, I think, beat out a lot of its competitors, but it's definitely another viable option for people uh, who are looking to get in at the three to $400 price range. It's a good option. I'm definitely not gonna knock it. Um, it actually has a lot of similarities, in my opinion, to the Walther PPS in terms of feel, weight, balance, and trigger. Now, one other thing I'm kind of not too sure about, too, is 
the way that it disassembles. Now I know, okay, there is that safety advantage of being able to remove the striker before continuing with the disassembly of the firearm. I'm not too sure that that's really necessary, especially if you practice and get used to clearing the chamber and being absolutely sure you have a clear chamber before disassembly. I know I, the first thing I do when I pick up a firearm, whether I am going to disassemble it or clean it or holster it no matter what I do. The minute I introduce a firearm to my hand, it gets checked, you know, just to make sure it's clear. So, and I know a lot of people are that way, it's just habit. So I don't know if I like the idea of having to extract small parts from internally from the firearm in order to disassemble it. I think that could be recipe for disaster or, I mean, even people could break apart the firearm, get distracted, leave, come back and you know, something's happened, you know, something got brushed over the back plate and then now you can't find it. I mean, you'd be surprised, but people lose small parts like this all the time. And it's just adding a little bit more complexity to the equation and more. Generally, when you're getting into firearms, less small parts is better and disassembling the gun to basically four components, slide, barrel, mainspring, and frame is typically the way people go now. So I know they're trying to think out the box. I, I don't know if I like that either. So disassembly and the safety on this are my two biggest complaints, but otherwise, uh, I think it's a good option, but I know I'm rambling, so I will leave you guys off with that. If you have any questions, please let me know by leaving those down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell notification button so you are aware when I am posting new content. And if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. Anyway, guys, I will leave you with that. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.